To put it another way, you must be faster and faster throughout the entire movement until lockout. You'll be doing the same exercises you did during stage two. However, the movements where you will apply compensatory acceleration training are the squat, bench press, and deadlift. These are the exercises which most resemble the actual lifting techniques you'll use in competition. During this period of your cycle, you will be making maximum strength gains. But you must remember to lower the reps on the compensatory acceleration movements. Neither your body nor your nervous system can handle the same number of reps as you use with ordinary exercises without suffering from overtraining. Overtraining will delay your cycle. Here is your workout for stage three. Now, you're ready for stage four. You are through worrying about strength improvement. Now is the time to get powerful power strength with speed if you are training for a powerlifting competition you now begin to introduce actual competition techniques into your training drop the wide grip bench presses in favor of the more efficient contest technique drop stiff-legged deadlifts in favor of conventional or sumo technique do away with high bar squats or safety squats in favor of your competitive stance it should combine all of the muscle groups needed to move the heaviest weight possible. If you are training for other sports, start getting away from isolation movements. Start incorporating exercises specific to your sport, increasing the speed of your sets. Think about what you need in competition. Strong quads? Strong trunk? Strong shoulders? The ten movements have given you a much greater level of absolute strength. Maintain that strength by continuing the 10 movements, but remember, they are secondary to working on your competition techniques. If you are training for a powerlifting meet, remember, stop all of the 10 movements two or three weeks before the contest date. And now, the final honing of your body for competition, stage five. Soviet athletes are famous for their strength and power. Their Olympic weightlifters and track and field athletes dominate international competition. Their secret is an important system of training they have developed to increase explosive power. It is only used for a brief period, about six weeks, in a peaking cycle timed to match the period when you want to be at your maximum in every way. Plyometrics, as the system is called, is a group of exercises consisting of leaping, bounding, and shock training. It is designed to cause rapid changes in how your nervous system responds to stress. It allows you to make more muscle cells fire instantaneously than you ever could before. And remember, the more muscle cells that get going, the more explosive force you have. This is your workout for stage five. stages, the ten movements, and now the final piece to make you complete, the five stepping stones. First, 
Follow a nutritional program capable of sustaining maximum stress on joints, muscles, and connective tissue. This includes lean proteins such as organ meats, chicken and fish, fresh natural oils, not the hydrogenated ones, that become solid at room temperature. If they are solid now, they won't melt inside your body. You already know to stay away from sugars. Honey, corn syrup, and fructose are all sugars. Use your training diary to record what you eat and how strong you feel the next day. You will soon notice certain foods don't work for you. You have to notice it because this is a different thing for each individual. Ergogenic aids are state-of-the-art work enhancers. Innocent, for example, helps improve muscular energy, enabling you to do more reps. Carnitine helps mobilize fat for sustained energy. And di- or trimethylglycine assists in the cell's utilization of oxygen. Certain amino acids help improve energy, muscular growth, and a number of other important biochemical functions. You use weights to make your muscles grow. You use these nutrients to make that growth efficient. Improving your power output takes a lot from your body, an awful lot. And the limitation has always been that your body can only take so much of that abusive stress. This is perhaps the most important stepping stone to greatness, teaching your body to recuperate faster and avoiding overtraining. Overtraining is when you put your body under more workout stress before it has recovered completely from the last workout. I will now show you how to restore your body more quickly so you can train harder and more often. Hydrotherapy, simple hot water, either in a hot tub or bath, brings the blood to the skin surface and helps flush out lactic acid produced by overworked muscles. Take a hot shower or whirlpool for six minutes after your cool down. Hot water will help your muscles rebuild faster after the hard workout. Deep muscle massage, not a gentle rub, but deep, almost painful cross-fiber massage of the muscles used in training, helps clear them of lactic acid and other wastes. Anything that promotes increased blood flow, heat and pressure both do this, will bring more oxygen to the muscles and help flush out toxins faster. If you have not recuperated between workouts, if you are overtrained, you will lose muscle instead of building it. It can be a gradual thing. It may take some time for you to notice you aren't making gains. That is time lost from your cycle, enough perhaps to keep you from being a winner. Be constantly aware of the signs of overtraining. First, an elevated pulse in the morning. To find your pulse each morning, put your hand on the side of your windpipe where your neck and head meet. Count the beats for 10 seconds, timed with a stopwatch. Multiply this times six. Keep a daily record of your morning pulse in your training diary, but only after your first two weeks of steady training. On any morning where your pulse is elevated by more than four beats after you calculate it, then watch for other signs of overtraining. These include loss of appetite, problems in falling asleep or staying asleep, fatigue, and loss of desire to train. If recuperation techniques and the other stepping stones don't eliminate the problem, take off for a day. Better to lose one day than a week of your cycle because of overtraining. How do you handle negatives? Do you excuse a poor workout because of poor equipment or bad spotters or lack of a coach? Why are you letting negatives serve as excuses? You won't have it perfect on competition day either. Look at it this way. The absence of a coach won't stop you. The lousy equipment won't stop you. Nothing, nothing is going to stop you. Use that determination to do a better workout. They won't get in your way. Nothing will. And from the beginning, from the moment you start your cycle, you must begin using visualization. Do this for about 15 minutes every day. Do it before sleep when you are in your most receptive state. Go over the lifts that you've worked on that day. Actually feel your muscles responding to the thought process. Visualize improvements in your technique. Visualize more weight in each lift. It's important to visualize the entire movement, to see it as a continuous motion, not as a series of still photographs and not as only a part. If you find that you have problems seeing the whole movement, you are probably weak in that part of the exercise, lacking in technique. Practice seeing it as a movie in your head. Replay it over and over again correctly until you can actually see the whole movement done right, done by you, done successfully as you want to do it.
The mind controls the body. It controls your muscles and your glands. This simple technique, visualization, can actually help you recuperate faster and restore your body in less time. Constantly monitor yourself and your progress. Don't trust entries in your training diary to memory. Efficiency in your training diary will carry over to your workouts. Be aware of your readiness for competition. For powerlifting, make sure your contest equipment and clothing is in order. Make sure your U.S. Powerlifting Federation membership is up to date. If you need a competition license for your sport, make sure your dues are paid and you are valid. Schedule your travel so that you have plenty of time to recover from jet lag or to get used to altitude changes. A true champion is always prepared. A true champion is always ready. And now, for competition or workout, it's time to lift heavy iron. You've been there before. You let your mind flow to within itself, where trickles of primordial instinct well up to become torrents of unleashed fury. You go to the other place, where there is no pain, no negative influences, no fear, a state of mind where only positive forces dwell. The iron is lifted. The sport of powerlifting is the greatest sport in the world. People find themselves caring for things in their lives that have the capability of inflicting great pain. Powerlifting can do that. It's a sport where danger is ever present. Injury to your body, though, is only fleeting. That's not real pain. Real pain comes from failure. Failure to achieve, failure to realize your potential. Yet, by definition, sports such as powerlifting can have only one winner. Most of us lose more than we win. The cost of trying is often pain, but the rewards of trying are greater by far. You'll know the true value of powerlifting when people stop and stare. You, my friend, are one of the strongest of the strong. You are revered above all men. People have always admired great strength. Throughout history, it has been that way, and it still is. And it always will be.